Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, I hope you're better, considering last night's calamity, where Chelsea lose 3-1 at home at Stamford Bridge to Real Madrid in the first leg of the Champions League quarterfinal, um, I gave you my thoughts on that, if you haven't seen it, you can catch it right here, you can also see the watch along and see my reactions to the goals as they were going through the net, and um, <laughs> yeah, what a night, what a night overall. I thought I would do this because this video is, a, I think, I think it's quite important. I think it's quite important. Chelsea have lost two games on the bounce now in embarrassing fashion, right? Um, some would say the Brentford result much more embarrassing than the Real Madrid result because Brentford, Real Madrid, you know. With all due respect to Brentford, absolutely. But, you know, Real Madrid, you, you hear that on paper and you automatically think, okay, this is going to be a game for the ages. Um, so... Still, regardless of the stature, regardless of those two opponents and how they differ in class or quality, we got smashed by both of them. Both of them. That can't continue. And this is where we've got to address a few things because Thomas Tuchel last night came out after the game post-match and spoke to BT Sport and then done his press conference. And he was, if I'm correct in saying, fuming. Not fuming, fuming, you know, more, more than fuming, uh, smoke coming out of his ears and his head, you know, it's like that cartoon where you get, you know, someone absolutely angry and then you get smoke coming out of every direction. That was, that was TT. And the, 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 what he managed to um, relay on camera to all of us, can you imagine what it must have been like in the dressing room? Post-match, he come out and said, the BT Sport pre presenter, um, journalist was asking him in terms of is there going to be a tw turnaround at the Bernabeu and he went no <laughs> he went firstly we've got to think about Southampton Southampton is the one we've got to talk about because playing like we did tonight we would lose at Southampton and then if we go to the Bernabeu I mean he said one thing which was spot on right because I said it on my watch along after we conceded the second goal I was like, let's, we might as well not go. Let's don't go. Just stay here. Madrid, you're through. Let's not play the second leg. He said the exact same thing. And I was like, you know, TT, you've, you've, you're a smart guy. <laughs> you're a smart guy. He said it honestly. You know, we, we don't have to go. We don't have to go. Playing like that, we don't have to go. We don't go to the Bernabeu. Simple. Because we will get hammered. We would get hammered. And he's spot on. He's absolutely spot on. Now, some people are going to be looking at that and going, TT shouldn't be saying that in public. Oh, he shouldn't be talking like that. Uh, the players are going to feel like uh, they're getting thrown under the bus. Good. Good. As far as I'm concerned, good. Because the players are the ones that let him down yesterday. Now, there are a couple of criticisms for Thomas Tuchel. Absolutely. Um, for example, Jorginho starting or... Kovacic being on the bench I mean you could argue Jorginho or Kante if they're going to come out of place for, for Kovacic but Kovacic needed to be on the pitch you know on that left hand side playing Aspilicueta um, on, as a left wing back where Ancelotti tactically played an absolute banger by having Valverde in that certain position you know more drifted over to the right, but also added himself as an additional midfielder. Worked to a charm. Worked to a charm. Carlo, King Carlo, I mean, you know, he's a smart guy too. Um, but there are things that you can criticise Thomas Tuchel for. Some would go with the fact that we went with a back three or back five, however you want to say it. Real talk though, let's be real, because I'm hearing this whole back four, back five talk. When we got smashed to Brentford, what was we playing? A back four. We lose in the manner that we did against Real Madrid. What was we playing? A back five or back three. The problem right now that I see in Chelsea and why I justify Thomas Tuchel's reaction after the game with him going in on the players publicly with the way that he did is because it seems like there's something going on within the camp, within the squad, mentally. Everyone looks nervous. Everyone looks like they're on edge. I mean, the basics that we require from our team that we didn't see yesterday. Things like focus, concentration, you know, Mark. <laughs> Mark Benzema. Is that, is that a big instruction? Do I need to even say that? Well, the players didn't, didn't 
didn't let that click in their heads. They let Benzema do what he wanted to. You know, getting stuck in, closing the gaps. Basic stuff, man. Basic, basic. We're not even talking on the ball, certain movements, certain patterns, uh, the approach and the way that we attack. Like, forget the tactical side, the basics. Focus, concentration, desire, intensity. Those are basics. That's like, you know, the bare minimum. It's like when you rock up to a job application and you have to check, do I have five GCSEs? Because that's the bare minimum. If I don't have that, I ain't got a chance in hell of getting a job, right? That's what you expect from the players to just show up with, regardless of their level. We didn't have that. That's not normal. And it wasn't even a case of one player or two players. It was everybody from goalkeeper to attack. Again, except for maybe Kai Havertz. You could single Kai Havertz out and go, you know what, you done. You, you had a decent game. You could probably leave the pitch with your head held high. You're the only one. Everyone else, something's off. And then you see the mistakes that we were making defensively, the mistake of Mendy. I mean, it's it's a calamity. It's a calamity. And that was on top of the Brentford performance. Let's remember that. That came after the way that they played against Brentford. So, you know, did, did that Brentford loss not register to you in your heads or something? That tells me something's off. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. And I hope, I hope, and this is why I justify Thomas Tuchel's reaction. I hope we get a result against Southampton. God forbid we don't. God forbid we don't get a result at Southampton. Which is why TT reacted the way he did. Because if he comes out and goes, nah, you know what? Yeah, it's yeah, we lost. We didn't play well today. Um, it's my responsibility. Um, you know, I, I take the blame. Um, I made a couple of errors. Um, I didn't judge the opposition correctly. I should have brought on this sub or that sub. Or maybe my lineup was wrong. Um, you know, things like that. Then you'd be looking at that and going, okay, that's fairly normal. But will the players react? Probably not. Seeing him yesterday... Flip out in the way he did, going, if we look, if we go to Southampton like this, we'll lose. We rock up to the Bernabeu next week, we're gonna get hammered. <laughs> I agree. I agree. We play he's not lying. He's telling the truth. You play like we did yesterday against Real Madrid at Southampton, Southampton will win one or two nil. Rock up the same way at the Bernabeu, I don't even want to watch. Because if they could get three past us in the manner that they did with the way that we were playing, with the mistakes we were making, we do the same at the Bernabeu, it will become five or six. So he's right, let's not go. <laughs> let's just stay in London. We don't need to have that embarrassment. We just don't. Forfeit the game, 3-0. If that is how we're going to show up, we can't show up like that. So him reacting in that manner tells me that he's now waiting for the players to prove me wrong. I've outed you out publicly now. Prove me wrong. Show me that I am not right in what I just said to the public, to the world. I told them, if you play like this, you're going to get smashed at Southampton. You're going to get smashed at the Bernabeu. Prove me wrong. Show me that we're not going to get smashed. Show me that we're going to get to Southampton and we're going to get a result. Show me that we are going to go to the Bernabeu and give everything to pull off one of the biggest comebacks in Champions League history. Show me. Because now it goes either way, Tuchel's a winner. If it goes one way and we get destroyed, Tuchel can be like, yeah, I told you. <laughs> told you. If we pull him off and we somehow, somehow change our patterns around and we change the way that we're playing and we get rid of what's going on in our heads right now and we actually play the way we should be playing, we pull off a result, Tuchel look like a genius. So it's a win-win for him. But the players are the ones that are letting him down here. Overall, yes, Tuchel's made a couple of mistakes yesterday, but overall, the basics, I mean, look... We go into the second half, he changes things up. He goes to a back four, he brings on Ziyech, he brings on Kovacic. Mendy makes a mistake, we go 3-1 down. How do you want his new tactic to have any sort of an impact? For those that were calling to go to a back four, well, out the window. <laughs> out the window. Mendy's mistake has cost the tie. That's what I'm saying. The players are the ones that have let him down yesterday. And you have to remember on top of that, I don't remember did I even mention this in my review, but I, if I didn't, I should have. I think I did, but I said a lot yesterday. <laughs> Tuchel's going through a lot in his personal life right now. Going through a divorce, 
right? That's only just really kicked off. That was only news to us four days ago. And those papers have been filed by his ex-wife now, I'm guessing, because they're going through divorce or they're separated. That's a lot for him to take. For the fact that now he's... Think about all the issues he's already had in his role at Chelsea. In terms of when people, when teams were getting their games postponed, Chelsea didn't. In terms of um, this whole ownership issue, is Roman Sedan, is he not? Tuchel was the one having to deal with the questions. After that, the war with Russia kicks off. Well, now it's looking like Tuchel's the one that has to deal with the questions. Then the ownership situation. Who's going to come in? Is it going to be the Ricketts? Is it not? He's the one getting the questions. On top of all the other issues we've had prior, prior including injuries, Chilwell, Reese James, this, that and the other. You remember how many men we had out at one time? Tuchel had to deal with that. Now he's got this. He's got a divorce. I mean, bloody hell, man. I feel for the guy. I really, really, really feel for the guy. I really do. And it's the bare minimum. This is where I'm going to round it all back to the starting point. It was the bare minimum of the players to just go out there and show some concentration, some focus and some intensity for your gaffer. Bare minimum. For him. You know. Do it for yourselves. Do it for him. We didn't. That's what I'm saying. The players let him down. So to him, for him to come out with the reaction that he did after the game, fully justified and I 100% agree with him. Let me know. Do you agree with him? Or do you not? Do you think he should go down a different route? Do you agree with what he said? Do you think that everything that he said is now is spot on? Let me know. I'd love to hear everything that you have to say in relation to yesterday's result and how we react. Or do we react? Do you think we will react? Do you think we won't? Do you think we'll get a result at Southampton? Do you think we won't? Do you think we'll go to the second leg in, at, the, at the Bernabeu and pull off a miracle? Or do you think it's over? I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know below. Hit me up. Much appreciated. But thank you all so much for watching. Tomorrow will be the preview to, to Southampton versus Chelsea. We are going away to St. Mary's. So make sure uh, you guys are tuned in for that preview tomorrow. Watch along on Saturday, 3 o'clock kickoff. Unfortunately, yes, we only have until Saturday, 3 o'clock. I don't know why we played on Wednesday. Why we're not playing Sunday, I don't know. Anyway, Premier League, it is what it is. Um, so I'll do a watch along for that review afterwards, as always. So I'll see you tomorrow for the preview to that game. Make sure you hit the subscription button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you have enjoyed this video. I'll see you all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. In a bit, take care and peace.